The new Ford Escape comes at an interesting time. Ford has just announced that it's phasing out its sedans and hatchbacks. So that means the Escape has to be more than just the high-tech athletic crossover it's been since 2013. It needs to be good enough to win over the old Fusion and Focus customers. So will the new Escape rise to the occasion? Stick around to find out and learn which trim of the Escape CarGurus recommends. The new Escape has a smooth, upbeat look. Visually, the new version certainly bridges the gap between hatchback and crossover, but it pays for that versatility by losing cargo space. With the rear seats folded, the Escape offers 65 cubic feet of cargo space, or just 60 cubic feet in upper-level trims. And considering the 2019 Escape had 68 cubic feet of cargo space, Ford seems to be going in the wrong direction. After all, the Escape's rivals seem to be growing in size. The Honda CR-V, Subaru Forester, and Volkswagen Tiguan all offer about 75 cubic feet of space. Rather than cargo capacity, Ford's emphasis appears to be on passenger space. Backseat passengers will feel pretty comfortable, and up front, the driver has a commanding driving position that provides good visibility all around. Look around the cabin, and you'll find large deep pockets and spacious center trays and consoles. Trims include the Base S, SE, SE Sport, SEL and the range topping titanium that we're driving. You can find a link in the description below to my written review where I go into each trim individually. With all the new tech making its way into cars these days, I expected even the base S trim to come well equipped. After all, even a base Toyota Corolla comes with a big touchscreen. But instead, Ford sticks the S with a dinky little 4.2 inch screen. And what's worse, the floating screen design makes those 4.2 inches look even smaller. Our titanium test model lives on the completely opposite end of the spectrum. It has a massive dual panel moonroof, handsome wood paneling, and a very nice two-tone leather interior. It also has a digital instrument panel, a premium B&O audio system, and a larger eight inch touchscreen that runs the Ford Sync 3 infotainment system. It has crisp graphics, intuitive voice control, and supports Android Auto and Apple CarPlay. If you already have a car with Apple CarPlay, you may have noticed its new look. That's thanks to a software update, and it's more than just a new design. You, or better yet, your passenger, can now operate your phone while it's projecting on the car's display. No more closing the CarPlay app screen when you need to use a different app on your phone. The titanium trim also has a head-up display, but it's relegated to a small flip-up screen, rather than being projected onto the windshield. This has its limitations. Primarily, I can't adjust it high enough to line up with my field of vision. Other automakers, like Mazda for example, also use this approach, typically because it's cheaper than producing two different types of windshields. The ones that reflect the head-up info are more expensive, but the driver's experience suffers because of this shortcut. CarGurus recommends the SE trim. It comes with the 8-inch screen that you see here. It also has automatic climate control, heated front seats, and a power driver's seat. All in all, the SE is the best blend of content and value. Ford offers four engines in the Escape, including a new base three-cylinder engine that makes 180 horsepower. There are two four-cylinder hybrid engines that make 198 horsepower and 209 horsepower, the former of which is the only engine option in the SE Sport, the latter of which is a plug-in hybrid option for the SE, SEL, and Titanium trims. The SEL and our Titanium trim test model are also offered with a two-liter EcoBoost inline four, making 250 horsepower sent through an 8-speed automatic transmission to all-wheel drive. That's what we're testing today. This is the Escape's most powerful engine. In around town, it has decent acceleration, even if the transmission takes a moment to react and downshift. But this engine really shines on the highway. It has plenty of power for getting up to speed and passing other cars. But at any speed, the steering is direct and taut, and the brakes are strong and responsive. The previous Escape had a reputation for refined, almost sporty driving dynamics, and it's great to see this new car can carry the torch. Complete fuel economy estimates for the Escape have not yet been posted, but in a week of combined city and highway driving, I managed 25 mpg. It should be noted that the EcoBoost engine can run on regular fuel, but Ford recommends using premium fuel. The Escape comes standard with Ford Copilot 360, a suite of advanced safety systems including forward collision warning, lane keeping assist, and automatic high beams. 
It also comes standard with blind spot monitoring and rear cross traffic alert. The 2020 Ford Escape S starts at $24,885. Our recommended SE trim starts at $27,095, and the range topping titanium starts at $33,400. Build out an Escape like our test model, and you're looking at between $37,000 and $38,000. It's not cheap, especially when the all new and larger Ford Explorer starts at under $33,000. But if you stick with an SE trim, the Escape will be far more competitively priced. And just think how far the small SUV has come in the past 10 or even the last five years. What was once considered upscale has now become accessible to the masses. Premium interiors and the latest technology and infotainment features have helped the Escape raise the bar for what an average SUV can be. More than that, the Escape proves that a commuter car doesn't have to be some boring conveyance. It can add engaging handling, great brakes, and potent engines to the daily commute. Thanks for watching. Subscribe to see more videos, like our review on the Mazda CX-5 and Toyota RAV4. If you think the Escape stands out in this crowd of SUVs, let us know in the comments. And to read my full review on the 2020 Ford Escape, go to cargurus.com.